pet owners of Reddit, what is something seemingly caring and adorable that your pet does to you or for you, but screws you over a little? Whenever I pack my work bag my cat sits in it, as if I won't realize, and will take her to work with me. She always seems sad when I take her out. When I was still living at home, my cat would always barge into my room and stretch out on my bed right as I was about to leave for work or school. He wasn't physically preventing me from leaving, but I lacked the willpower to ignore him. I was late a lot, a little bit late, but I thought a cat tax might be in order. My husky does something similar, little background I stay in a hotel mf as I work out of town, but I'm home on the weekends. When my pup sees me packing my uniform, or putting it on he looks at me with a very sad face. Usually I give him some really good pets, after he proceeds to lay in front of the front door, to prevent me from leaving. It breaks my heart every time. Picture of my pup. If you don't already, consider leaving a smelly sweater or workout clothes for your pup. Having something that smells strongly of their person can really help them, until you get back. Having a goodbye routine can help too, but the cuddle thing is a big deal. My cat is very protective of me. He follows me like a shadow, and has attacked an ex-BF who was yelling at me. Whenever I brought dates home and eventually my current BF my cat tries to assert dominance. He will stand on their laps, face height, and give them a stare down. If they try to move him, he will cat slap you. I don't let him get away with this behavior, and will remove him, but I have to admit, that it has made me chuckle. I use this as a standard, when we had our family cat, if she accepted my girlfriend then I knew it'd work out. I then did the same with all my ex's cats to try, and win their affection, to strengthen my appeal to the ex. My ex had a small dog, that would only listen to, and follow her around, and to cats, one that was extremely antisocial. The antisocial cat loved sitting on my lap, and I was able to walk the dog without a lease, because she would stick right by me. My ex was amazed, but some things just don't work out, even if the pets know how good you are. I have a pet rat. Rats love chewing. My rat chews off my belt loops. She chews when she is comfortable. I miss my rats. They had such distinct personalities. Voodoo was a fat mama's girl, Valkyrie was fiercely independent. They both still came to me for comfort, and Vox wouldn't even let other people hold her, she jumped from their arms into mine. Voodoo, even as a hyperactive baby rat, just wanted to lay on my shoulder and lick my neck. They were so sweet. Honestly I almost cry sometimes thinking about how wonderful they were. Losing them was devastating. Each is a unique soul. I had three girls. Niru was an adventure rat who didn't care much for people, she wanted to be out and exploring. Mura was sweet and caring to everyone, grooming strangers and hugging her sisters. Nala was scared of everything and would explore only if Nuru went first. She was the most playful and cheerful, but a little slow. They were all completely different. My dog really thinks she adds value to the household and earns her keep by barking at every truck that goes by. Even looks at me real pleased when she does it. Very adorable. Very loud. Same. And he does it 5 times as much, when we are eating to try to get little treats. He will run up to the front window and bark 5 times, and come sprinting back, and look at us expectantly like payment for the job I just did please. My neighbors have a dog who starts to howl every time something with a siren ambulance, police, fire truck drives past. And we live in a street which is a major feed for those siren things. So now we hear something like we owie owie are, and from the other side, like an echo ahoo ahoo, ahoo ahoo. So whenever so, and I hear a siren, we automatically mouth ahoo ahoo, to each other, even if the dog isn't actually home. You have been successfully pavloved by a dog. My 15 year old kitty scoots, likes to park it, and loaf between my legs when I'm reclined. He gets super comfy, starts kneading and purring, and his warmth makes me sleepy until I eventually nod off, until he farts, and the ensuing olfactory onslaught permeates the room so much, that I have to get up and leave. Wow. Thank you so much for all of the hilarious and informative replies and big ups to the anonymous redditor for the gold. You've popped my reddit gold cherry. Here's my cat tax of Scoot's big grey boy and his 14 year old brother Dashy.
mine farted quite a bit, until I changed her diet, checked the meat content on the pouches, and discovered that the same brand canned stuff was cheaper, more recyclable and had more meat less carbs in it. She hasn't done her silent but deadly drive, by farting for ages now equals D. Sounds like a sonic ock name. Scoots the cat. If my dog wants to cuddle, while you're looking at your phone, she will try to knock it out of your hands with her paw. It's cute, but it can be annoying. Especially if you're lying down, and the phone falls on your face. Heavy handed reminder, that she's the love of your life. My little dog has a very precious thing, that he does every time I'm sitting on the toilet. I don't know, why he does it there but maybe it's, because he can reach me there. He will sit on his hind legs and ever so softly hold onto my hand with his paws, while he licks my hand. He does this mostly, after I've eaten something, or washed my hands. He is a trip. My mom's Rottweiler does this, except she doesn't know how big she is, and she ends up eating your phone across the living room. Or does she 100% know what she's doing, and is simply more effective at getting the phone away? My cat has two modes terribly polite, and terribly loud. Terribly loud involves standing on the highest surface she can manage, and shouting swearing at us, until we fix whatever's wrong we're 25 seconds late for, when she thinks her dinner should be served, there was a shadow, her sister is sitting on a box. Terribly polite involves tapping my hand gently with her paw toast for fusses, tapping my leg to make sure I'm happy for her to sit on my lap, and bringing me gifts she refuses to go outside, so she carefully brings a selection of her toys, and puts them in front of my bedroom door every night she's a tiny little black cat and my favorite void cloud in the world. I've taught my cat what shut up, means, when he starts howling for no reason, I'll yell, theta, shut up. And he usually does. Favorite void in the cloud, is a wonderful description. When my dog was alive he used to sleep next to our heads the only problem was he really liked to lick pillows, so we would wake up with him laying on the pillow and a huge wet spot next to him. Sometimes it would be like half the pillow and I would have to move him in the night to flip the pillow, so I could sleep on the dry side. My brother's dogs do this, except one will lick, and the other will nibble. There's no escaping it. My dog would also lick our couch so, when we sat down there was a 50-50 chance we would sit on a wet spot, so much fun. Even though some stuff was annoying I still miss him. Thought my dog was licking the couch, had big wet spots, turns out he was licking his paws due to an allergy. In the midst of trying to figure out what food is causing allergies. Right now on meds, and no more wet spots, but he has so much more energy, he's 95 pounds. My mom's dog puts her neck over your face, if you are laying down, we call it snuffication and she doesn't do it to my mom only really me, I'm glad my highest comment is about snuffication, thanks all. Only she can be the sole beneficiary of your mom's affection. SHHHHH. Best part is she is a basset hound, and I'm the only other person she listens to. My dachshund used to do something like this, as a teeny pup she'd lay across my neck to sleep. Then she got bigger, and I woke up cause I couldn't breathe. Snuffication is my new favorite word. Right up there with crapalanche when a pile of stuff loses stability and topples. Crapalanche is great. I used to work as a stoker and the number of times people failed to stack pallets right is insane. So we'd get crapalanches regularly, and cold views the term. If my cat is in a bad mood she'll run at me as in walking, and bite at my ankles, but if she's in a good mood she'll run at me, and rub against me, it's 50, 50 with this cat. Even if she's running to give me some love, I have to take defensive precautions in case it's an attack. This is especially stressful when it's dark and I'm walking down the stairs. She does the product by doing the attack. And if someone else comes in you best bet she fight back. Cats doing some wartime mental warfare trying to keep you stressed, and on edge always uncertain of what's to come. I'd be careful. To me it sounds like she's got, pent up energy and wants to play. Maybe get a dangly toy, and try play sessions before bed, if you haven't already. Yeah that's what mine did, when he wanted to play. When I'm incredibly stressed, my 16 pound cat will climb onto my chest when I'm sleeping, and need my face and neck. It's adorable, but only between 2am and 5am. Rip sleep. Also pain. 
Our cat will begin licking my head, if I don't scratch him, when he thinks I should. Waking up with half my head wet with cat spit is less than ideal. Just imagine how smooth your skin is though. I swear cat's tongues are made of sandpaper and exfoliants. I'm losing more hair than I like to admit. I don't need my scalp sanded down. My cat isn't allowed out of his room unsupervised, because he is very rebellious and destructive, but if he was, he would do that. It kind of sounds like your cat is going through an angsty phase. Harvey likes to bring his toy over to us, and shove it in our faces. It supposedly means he thinks we are alpha, but it's very difficult to do anything with a toy in your face. We've gotten around to saying thank you for the toy, but no thank you. What if he recognizes that you're working, but thinks you're too stressed, and needs some toy time? I wouldn't be surprised by that either. He's such a sweet boy. Dogs are so good, and we don't deserve them. My dog gives her slimy rubber toys to my baby, to try and teach the baby how to play throw like the other humans do. Instead of throwing so dog oak and then fetch, the baby proceeds to chomp down on dog's saliva coated toy, assuming that the dog is sharing a teething toy. It's so gross but kinda cute. He lays on my bed when I'm gone. He does it, because he likes my scent, but he sheds like no other. He likes your scent, but what if he's doing it, because underscore he likes your scent, and wants to impart his scent, because he thinks, you underscore like his scent? I have a cat that's obsessed with the smells of his people, especially his favorite one. Any clothing left out, after wearing he rolls in, and snarfles their most scented areas like the collar line or armpit. Clothing after a good workout is his favorite, and he also likes to sniff and lick armpits. He's a weird cat, but I love him. My cat will just shove his head in people's shoes and roll around with the shoe in his head. Doesn't matter who the shoes belong to, he's got a sniff. We taught our hound George to sit, and shake hands, before he gets his dinner or treats. It's also evolved to a point, where he'd put his paw on your lap to ask for it, when it's dinner time. Unfortunately sometimes he gets so excited for food, that he punches in the face, or in the groin. My stepdad taught his German Shepherd, to give you a kiss on the cheek for a treat, if you tap it. One day, we are having pizza. Before I can even think, she gives me this cartoon-esque head moving kiss across my cheek and snatches my pizza and runs off with it. Touché, Kirby, touché. My cats shake hands as a trick, so when we are eating a really good snack they will stick out their paws to be shook. I die every time.